Hey you guys, this is Stefan Kesson from the Online Itinerant, and I'm just here to wish you a happy Tuesday. And um, the week has started. I hope it's been a great week for you. Um, today I'm going to talk about something that's really important um, when we work with students who are deaf or hard of hearing. And it's something that has been really impacting me lately, um, and that is the issue of isolation. Isolation for our students um, or our patients or whatever capacity you work with um, kids who are deaf and hard of hearing. And it's been hitting me lately because um, many of my students have just been especially struggling with it. I think it's that time of the year. It's October. So the beginning of the year, um, you know, honeymoon is kind of worn off a little bit. And now they're in the routine and there's things like homecoming and football games and, um, you know, different social things that um, maybe are coming up. And, and isolation is one of the biggest impacts of hearing loss. When we think about um, what we do with a child who's a naughty, what do we do? We take them and we put them in timeouts, right? We remove them from that situation so that they really are not with their peers and they're not participating. And even in like a prison system, um, the worst punishment a person could get is to be put in solitary confinement. Um, and that is is isolating, isolation situation um, where people are being um, punished, right? And then met for many of our students, that is kind of the life that they live. Um, especially for our kids who are signing and that's, they're the only signing kid in their environment. They've got maybe they've got an interpreter, maybe a teacher for the deaf that comes and goes, but outside of that, um, that might be the only person that they really have a strong connection to. And that can be emotionally harming. Um, mentally harming, you know, um, we think about the mental health needs of these students and they're higher. They've got more. And I think it's because so often they are so isolated for so long. So that is a special challenge to us um, as we are looking at our students um, and the, the kids that we work with. It's really important that we uh, take a measure on um, how they are socializing, who's their village, who are they in contact with, do they have anybody besides that adult um, to connect with, and and is there time for just social conversation? You may, guys may notice that I changed my hair today, I'm in curls, and um, my hair is actually very intentional. I love to change things up because it's a lot of conversation. It's conversation, conversation, you wouldn't believe the language that comes out of it, um, activities and routines and events and just experiences, especially with my girls. Um, but I do that intentionally so that we can have that social conversation. So often our kids, they don't get those social conversation. It's all academic. It's all business all throughout the whole day. And, um, that's a really hard situation. So I just really want to encourage the, you this week to really build in time to have social conversations, um, natural conversations, and to take measure of your students or your patient, whatever the capacity is that you're working with uh, students who are deaf or hard of hearing. Take, take note of their situation, their social situation, their conversational situation, the language that they have, the opportunity that they have just to be able to talk fun stuff real world stuff, what's happening in life stuff, because um, our kids need that. And when they're behind in school, academically or language wise, it's really easy to feel like, I don't have time. We don't have time to just sit and talk and play games. We can't just watch the news or TV or anything like that. We've got, we've got business, we've got work to do. But I just want to challenge that and say there's always time to build in that community and that social conversation and figure out what's going on in the classroom. And if we need to be able to build or figure out a way to build more social relationships and make those connections and make that child a member of that classroom community, 
then that really needs to be important to us and something that we take note of. Um, so that's my challenge for you this week. Um, the online itinerant does have a full training um, inside the about building peers when there are no deaf and hard of hearing peers because that's really, really important to build deaf and hard of hearing peers in to our students. So they um, recognize that they're not the only person, the only kid that struggles with whatever they're struggling with, with feelings of isolation or loneliness or, or mishearing or hard time in school or not feeling comfortable with technology or signing. They don't like being the only person who uses that communication, but whatever it is, um, it's really important that we're able to build in some peers for them and whatever that looks like. So that's a training inside the academy. If you're interested in that, you can check that out. Otherwise, my challenge to you, take special notes and pour in to those social relationships and um, the opportunity just to make sure that our students are not feeling isolated and alone, but they are part of their classroom community. Okay. Thanks and have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.